The keelback snake is another one that's found mostly with brown colouring, and this one won't hurt you either. Older and especially sick snakes may be darker in colour, or even black. Alright guys, here we have the keelback. Its other name, or less common name, is the freshwater snake. Now this is pretty much about as big as they get. This particular one is a very heavily pregnant female. Now, to start off with, I don't know if you can notice on its back a few lumps all the way down its back. And what happens is all frog-eating snakes in uh, southeast Queensland actually get a parasite. That's like a skin worm, and they live underneath the skin, and uh, quite often they'll die from this before they die of old age. Now, obviously, the keelback is a non-venomous snake. Now, these guys do us a massive favour, because it's one of the few animals, or just, I think it's the only animal, that can actually eat a cane toad and survive. So it's doing us a bit of a favour by knocking off the cane toads. Now, the problem is, it's a shade of brown. Now, how many people have it in their head that if a snake is brown or black, it must be nasty? So I all too often see these guys actually get knocked on the head by people thinking that they're a brown snake. Now another thing that they get mistaken for is a rough scale. Rough scales grow the same size, very, very similar in colour, and eat the same food, found in the same areas. The problem is, if you look very, very close to that keel back, he's got a little smiling face at the very back of his mouth, it's got an upturned smile. The rough scale doesn't have that. Keelbacks are harmless, but look very much like the venomous rough scaled snake. So don't go near them just in case you've got it wrong. Call Tony or another snake catching professional and have it removed. Another thing is rough scales, believe it or not, have smooth scales. Now a lot of people see that these guys have got heavily keeled scales. Now I don't know if you can zoom in there Carl and get, get a good view of that. But these guys are semi-aquatic, which means they hang around areas like this that's very swampy, and they usually are coming out at night time, but they will come out in overcast days, because obviously overcast days bring out the frogs as well. Now these guys go sticking their face in the water, chasing tadpoles and frogs all the time. Now those keels do exactly, they act exactly like keels. They help them swim. They're unbelievably active and unbelievably fast underwater. They can hold their breath for a long time, and believe it or not, they'll smell the air using their, sorry, they smell the water using their tongue, just the same way they do the air. Now these guys, because they do have rough scales, people assume they're the rough scale and get knocked in the head, which is a sad thing. Female keelbacks can produce up to 15 eggs in a clutch. Now these guys, they're not venomous at all. If by chance it does feel threatened, and normally keelbacks are very, very placid, but this little lady being as he heavily pregnant as she is, was quite defensive when I um, approached her and did have a little bit of a go. And just a minute ago when I got her out of the bag, she did the same thing again. As we strive to stop the relentless march of the cane toad across the northern parts of our country, it's important to remember that there is at least one harmless little snake out there doing its bit to help us. All right, guys. This young fellow here is not exactly the healthiest example of um, this breed of snake. Now the situation here was I removed it from a, a service station in Yatla. Now this guy had fallen down into the pit where they actually store all the, all the fuel. So he was unable to get himself out and they're just about to this weekend now pull the service station apart. So they were worried about the well-being of this snake and obviously the employees that are going to have to be hanging around there. And they called me to come and remove him. Now he's very slow and extremely skinny and you can see the way he's moving. I think that he's got some form of um, poisoning from the fuel, the fumes, because he's not acting the way a snake should be acting. Now put him on the ground, see what he does. But he looks very, very unhealthy. Now I don't know if you can see the size of the keels on this guy, but quite often people see that the people that don't know what they're talking about with snakes or the, the public will see this breed of snake, see that it's brown or a shade of brown in colour, straight away panic, assume that it's the worst possible scenario. Then they see the rough coloured scales and I go, hang on, this is a rough scale, and the poor bugger being an, a totally harmless snake cops himself a bit of an undeserved reputation and gets killed. Now this guy, apparently, and I've never seen it myself, like a lizard, if it's really, really upset, it will drop its tail. But the funny thing is, it's never grow back its tail again. Now this guy is about one third the thickness of what it should be, and the way he's moving, uh, he's not moving very well, and I'll be surprised if he survives. Um, obviously he spent way too much time down in that pit. He's having troubles, you see, it's rolling over on his back. He's got major issues. That will be because of the fumes of oil and fuel and whatnot have uh, given him neurological dramas. But Mother Nature will sort that out. I think this guy will cruise off into the bush only to be picked up by a kookaburra or something like that. That'll save him from suffering. But anyway, now here in uh, South East Queensland we have 20 different breeds of snakes. The funny thing is the majority of them are a shade of brown or can be a shade of brown. Now people have it in their mind that um, if this, a snake is black or or brown, that it must be dangerous. The problem is it's what most of them look like, so people unnecessarily kill harmless snakes. Now along with the cane toad, the keelback likes to eat small lizards and frogs and usually stays out of houses. 